Hi, I'm Raymond and I'm the owner of Sure Comeback Wantami, located at 110 Pashri Hawker Centre. And I'm also actually the previous owner of Super Supper, which have already closed down. As some of you may have known, I actually own uh, Raimondo Seafood Congee also. It kind of took off a period of time. And so we actually also uh, expanded opening another outlet at uh, Ayer Raja. Which then we found out uh, COVID actually kind of hit quite bad at that time. Uh, as when we just first opened there. And that caused us to uh, really lose a lot of money. Back then I actually mentioned about my gambling issue. About how I got myself into debt and everything. Now on hindsight, I kind of realised that unknowingly even like in business, I also brought over that gambling mentality when it wasn't making money. In order to recoup or to, to make sure that I can uh, minimise my loss, I kind of like invested more together with my wife to open another place called Super Supper at uh, Jalan Besar. The food was good, no doubt. A lot of people say and affirm us by saying, but there are a lot of bad decisions like improper planning, the numbers and everything kind of like uh, cause the business to not uh, be able to sustain and last as long as we hope it could. At the end of the day, we kind of like pull a plug la, to stop the bleed. It's more um, it's more sad in a sense where all I want is to give uh, to provide for my family la, and is, uh, provide for all the workers to to have a, a, a stability. When we actually closed down, not to deny the fact that we also got ourselves into debt again. So I think for that, I, I feel last time I got myself is it, through gambling debt. Now it's through this business failure, we got ourselves into debt again. I feel sad as in my wife have to go through this with me again. My wife is really uh, supportive with me. And this man sure come back one time we came back. It's more of like uh, to pick ourselves up and uh, going back to our hawker roots. It's uh, no shortcut this time. I am at the store, uh, slogging every day, making most of the preparation myself. I, I previously shared it's actually my it's my first love life. It's like uh, the first hawker scene that I came into is one time me. So this time round we actually do a lot of um, uh, very different. We put a lot of effort in it. Like from the noodles, we we choose duck egg noodles, the char siu. We also implement the smoke flavour, we smoke our char siu. Also we tumble, we use this uh, machine, a, a vacuum tumbler to, to tenderize the meat, to marinate the meat. From every aspect of the noodle, we try our best to make it the best. La. The name is quite obvious, la. so we, what we serve is uh, wonton mee. I think now I really believe in focusing on one dish and putting our effort in that particular dish. La. It's not like the usual kind of wonton mee that you will taste. La. It's more like a traditional but yet something different. We use smoked char siu, we only use fresh pork in our in our wontons. And uh, we also have a premium bowl, which actually have this addition of uh, tiger prawn roll. The very first food business that I choose to do is also wonton mee. Like in primary school, I would eat wonton mee. Secondary school, I also eat wonton mee. You know, in the, the school canteen. When I go to Malaysia, when we cross the border, I also go and find wonton mee. That's why actually my noodle is actually sourced from Malaysia. It's a very particular noodle that you cannot find in Singapore. It's dark egg noodles. Singapore don't have it. So I eat almost all the wonton mee in JB. And the funny thing is, even during COVID, right, when they announced that the border is going to close, I even like, wow, I, I had to go and get my fix with wonton mee. Before the border closed at 2359, I went at uh, 8 p.m. riding a motorcycle go eat one time and then come back before the border closed because we don't know how long the border is going to close. That's how much uh, love I have for one time I only can tell you in Malaysia, right, it's so competitive and, and you need to really, really do very well for what you're doing. And uh, the one that I love, right, is at this uh, Jalan Lima Ratos. If you search, you search Jalan Lima Ratos, you will find this particular one time Yeah, We are using the same noodle actually, so really the best. I think for any hawker to, to become a restauranteur could be quite like maybe a, a dream, a big, very big step. But after experiencing it, right, now I found out that actually it's much not so stressful being a hawker because 
you're just managing a, a, a stall. Not many factors that you need to, to look after. Like when you run a restaurant, there's so much. Everything is under your own cost. Yeah, that's when a lot of unanticipated un costs uh, was incurred, which kind of took us back on improper planning. And that's why we cannot last as long as I think there is a lot of lowest points in everyone's life, especially when in failure. Lah. But I also realised that during the lowest point, right, what is most important is the support lah, from your loved ones, your family. I kind of like also ask my, my son, my daughter, that when we're close, are they disappointed in Papa and everything? They say they're not. They are happier lah, in a sense because F&B business really robs a lot of time away from our family. So the sacrifice is real. But I think whatever lowest point that we can be in our life, the family support, the loved ones, especially a good wife, children, those are the, the pillar of the strength that can help us through. When I lost all my money and I don't see hope, it's always when I don't see hope. Lah. That's, that's when it's the lowest point. Lah. But when you have your family with you, you can go through everything at least. Now the priority is really of how to repay the debt, and how to work hard with no shortcut lah, like to man this hawker store, being here every day, earning a, a real decent uh, hard work in, income in exchange to repay my debt left lah. There is a lot of calculation and we divide all equally to, to, to repay everyone. I think this is a main challenge lah, but again, uh, what is heartwarming is the people that I owe, they know it's an honest mistake, they know that I'm doing my best to uh, repay them. I'm glad, I'm glad it turns out quite okay for, for all everyone and they feel the, the sincerity. I mean, I even owe my suppliers and there is a, a few ways that I can actually take one of which the easy way I can just, we can just declare bankrupt and then again and then just say I'm sorry, I got no money to pay but that is really the easy way out. But the right thing to do is to work hard and to repay these people that it's also their hard-earned money. So the only way I can do right is by being a hawker. Hopefully I will work hard enough to be able to repay them as soon as possible.